Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon everybody. Um, today's video subject matter is Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. Um, apparently it's an exclusive article in People magazine. I shall put a link in the description so you can go and read it for yourself. Came out here in Spain about an hour ago. All about how Lily was christened in uh, America, I think in Los Angeles, or uh, somewhere in California by an arch Archbishop of Los Angeles. And that Meghan and Harry now refer to them as Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. Um, <laughs> People exclusively confirm that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex held a christening for their 21-month-old daughter last Friday in a small and intimate ceremony in Montecito, California. Um, a spokesperson for the Sussexes said... I can confirm that Princess Lilibet Diana was christened on Friday, 3rd of March, by Archbishop of Los Angeles, Reverend John Taylor. Um, apparently they invited the royal family who didn't attend, but uh, they, they are referring to them now as Prince and Princess, and there's nothing anybody can do to stop them doing that. Um, so I just double check the royal website line of succession and they're not referred to as prince or princess there. Um, I mean, in English, in England, I don't know about America, but you can call yourself anything you like. I could change my name tomorrow to Princess Fiona. <laughs> um, and I knew it. So when people talk about royal protocol, that doesn't mean anything at all to someone like Meghan. It doesn't mean anything. Um, and I have mentioned this over the last year that if, for example, the Duke title was taken, she would just call herself Princess Meghan. So there you go. To me, I mean, it's meaningless. It's absolutely meaningless that she calls her children Prince and Princess. Whether they are technically Prince and Princess, I'm not quite sure. They, it hasn't been declared by the King. Um, that's what counts with a title, that it actually has substance. But in the um, public arena... If she were to refer to herself as Princess Meghan or Princess Henry of Wales or the Princess of Wales, there is nothing anybody could do to stop her. And then publications might refer to her as that and, and it sticks after a while. So I have warned of this lots of times. Now, interestingly, the fact that she's done that, and I don't believe this is Harry. I could be wrong. It's just my opinion. I think this is Meghan. It's, to me, smacks of rage, anger, uh a kind of a, you won't give me the lashings of apologies that I demanded, you won't uh, officially send us an invite to the coronation, because I don't believe that was an official invite, I believe that was a preempt to see and to lay down certain terms and conditions if they were to attend. Um, <laughs> she's livid, she's livid, and that's what that says to me, because it's not just a lack of respect that um, the king and the institution, as she likes to call it, haven't sort of given her the green light. Now, I don't believe they have because it would have been changed on the royal website and it hasn't been. Um, this is similar to when she said that the Queen doesn't own the word royal, which technically the Queen doesn't in every single country on planet Earth, but I mean, it's, it's a sign of respect. And the way titles work is they only really throw lead with people if, um, if they are endorsed and they are proper titles. Um, so what do you make of that? To me, I, I think that the nearer we get to the coronation and the less of her demands are met, the more she will scream and kick off and she'll get angrier and angrier and angrier and really, really livid. Really livid. I know from our two narcs, if they don't get their own way, I mean, it, it, it's uh, they scream loudest as they go round the U-bend in the loo, as uh, is an expression that I've used more than once. They go mental. And um, they play by their own rules. So it's an extraordinary thing for her to do. She's an extraordinary character, isn't she? And I don't mean that as in extraordinary, like super special. I mean, really unusual, um, difficult, um, but that's very vengeful. That is full of, full of hatred. 
I'd love to hear what you all think about that. And uh, also, um, just to clear something up on the video yesterday about Harry and the um, hallucinogenics, I'm still reading your comments, fascinating comments, loads of good advice. I did actually say in that video that under certain circumstances, cannabis has healing properties and it is used by people. For example, people who have, I think, multiple sclerosis, I could be wrong, but things like that. And somebody did comment and say that their 80-year-old mother had the benefits of cannabis and there was nothing like it. And I wasn't for a minute saying um, that it should be outlawed. What I was saying is that it is an undeniable fact for me and Graham, because we've seen people react badly to it. Now, why those particular individuals reacted badly to it, and yet Graham and I didn't, and lots of other people we know didn't, who knows? Um, they do tend to have been people who started smoking it when they were younger, may perhaps not fully developed brain in adolescence. Um, my friend Thomas, he, he really got into it and it affected him very badly and he became quite schizophrenic. He was like Jekyll and Hyde, honestly. <laughs> and uh, he came to join us when we were on the run and he was really quite a handful. Um, he created a lot of problems. I mean, as, just as one example, one day we were having a nice lunch in our caravan, lovely sunny day, and he just appeared at the caravan window with a baseball bat and he said he was gonna go and attack some other campers, some Italian lads, because they were looking at him and they weren't looking at him. Uh, they started looking at him because he had this baseball bat, you know, he's doing this and he's looking at them. And I said, well, now they're looking at you. You're making a scene, stop it. Um, and there were a few other incidents, quite a few other incidents like that, which is the last thing you want when you're on the run. Oh, and by the way, lots of people keep asking because if there's new subscribers, Google Fiona Mon. I should just put a link in my, my thing all the time on my bio. Uh, then people can go and look it up. But yeah, it's the last thing you want when you're on the run is... <laughs> Is a, he was one of my co-accused as well, is uh, someone kicking off like that on innocent bystanders <laughs> because he's got a touch of paranoia. I shouldn't laugh really because he deteriorated and got worse and worse and worse in the end. And uh, I've known, oh, I could probably count about four people. I think the, halluc the suggestion that hallucinogenics can be just sort of loosely used. What I would have liked to have heard Harry and Dr. Gabor say is that these type of things must only be under prescription and strict supervision, and they should have emphasised that. Whereas the way they were talking about it, Harry sort of had his knees in the air laughing and like that, and really making it as a light-hearted joke that it, it's a great thing to do if you've got any kind of mental health problems. And I disagree with Harry. I don't think it is a great... I don't think it's a go-to thing to do. And from a lot of the comments that a lot of you put on the video yesterday, apparently weed and slab are different animals today than the ones back in the day that either Graham was trying to smuggle or that we were smoking in Holland. Apparently it's a lot, lot stronger. I suppose they've perfected the strains and there could be other things mixed in with it. So it's pretty serious and it's very, very sad. And I've read a lot of really tragic stories from a lot of you uh, and received emails about young people and it started with cannabis and some of them unfortunately died. Not, not of cannabis overdose, but, you know, it set them on a particular path, which is incredibly sad. And uh, I'm the last one to be approved, but I'm, I'm not, I do not approve of drugs. When I, I first started smoking it with Graham, I thought it was totally harmless because it was for me and it was for Graham. But having seen how it affected Thomas and then subsequently other people, I became very wary of it. And yes, it has definitely must have medicinal purposes because I have seen how it has helped people and I've known an awful lot of people who smoke it once in a while and they're absolutely fine so I'm not condemning cannabis because some people got really upset that they thought that's what I was saying what I was condemning was Harry and Dr Gabor discussing something so complex in a very very flippant manner anyway I shall really look forward to your thoughts and opinions on Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet, go read the article. It's, this is the beginning of the tantrum, in my opinion. Thank you very much for listening, as always.